Well, of course. Of course Jack Eichel gets traded to Vegas. Just for Vegas reasons. Hi there, it's Brett Hornby here, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. And uh, follow up from my latest video that I made yesterday that the Calgary Flames were reportedly and rumored to be seriously making a play for Jack Eichel, as well as the Vegas Golden Knights. You can see this lamp's not my favorite color. It's in gold. However, I do have some mixed emotions on the trade that actually happened because you have to wonder, was there any truth and merit to that rumor that I talked about yesterday? And also, could this be a trade that the best trade that the Calgary Flames made was not pulling the trigger on Jack Eichel? And you almost got to wonder what, what were we were supposedly offering if that rumored was not the case. But this is all it took for the Buffalo Sabres to land or unload Jack Eichel to the Vegas Golden Knights. And uh, I'm on cap friendly. It's definitely very interesting to see Vegas's cap situation now on all the long-term injured reserves. Keep in mind, Jack Eichel is not ready to play Probably not until February when he gets his neck surgery done. If you think it was bad last year with Tampa Bay, with the, you know, being over the cap and long term reserve, and then get to the playoffs, win the cup, imagine how bad it would be with the Vegas Golden Knights if they do win the cup. But ultimately, the Vegas Golden Knights, they acquired Jack Eichel and a conditional 2023 third round pick from Buffalo. Going Buffalo's way, this is all it took was for Alex Tuck, prospect in Peyton Krebs, and then a conditional first-round pick in 2022, and a conditional second-round pick in 2023. How the conditions work is the first-round pick that is going to Buffalo in this upcoming draft is top 10 protected. And I'm going to say if that pick turns to be a top 10 pick, I think a lot of heads would be rolling and a lot of, you know, skulls would be cracked in the Golden Knights organization if it was a top 10 pick. Given how, uh, you know, they've been trying to go all in. No Vegas pun intended. But then another thing for Vegas reasons that could happen is maybe they'll just miss the playoffs and get, and get the first overall pick with the 0.2% odds. But the condition is, is that if that first round pick turns into a top 10 pick, then that will get deferred until next season, and then the Buffalo will get the 20th, third round pick in 2024, and then it says on the Buffalo side of the trade that if the Vegas top 10 pick, then it will get moved till 2023, and then the first round pick in 2022 if it goes to 2023, and then the uh, second round pick that's conditional, we'll get moved to 2024. So essentially, if Vegas's first round pick that's going Buffalo's way becomes a top 10 pick, and then the other picks will just basically get used a year later. But that's pretty much all it took for Buffalo to take the offer from Vegas. Is Alex Tuck, another solid forward, who's also injured right now, so basically He's taking Jack Eichel's place on the long-term injury reserve and a prospect in Baton Krebs. And apparently there is word that Vegas was, or Buffalo was fixed on that prospect. Because, I mean, going back to the rumored trade that the Flames were apparently were offering, was apparently we were offering Matthew Kachuk a recent first-round pick that could have been Matthew Granado, Connor Zari, Higa Pelche, or maybe Cody Silvell, Mackey, or even Sean Monahan, just to go far back. In terms of recent first-round picks, that's on the Calgary Flames roster. And then it said, as well, our first-round pick in 2022 and two prospects. That was that Kevin Weeks tweet that came out that I had to make a video on it to react to the rumor. And, of course, many other hockey YouTubers. And actually, I did find a user, I believe his name's right, it's called Rome Hockey. 
he's a Buffalo fan, and he was salivating and excited on that uh, proposal. I almost got to wonder if you're a Buffalo fan, and ultimately you got two draft picks, Alex Tuck and Peyton Krebs. I'm going to say from a hockey standpoint, that proposed rumor trade that was on the books that the Flames were offering to get Jack Eichel was better. And, not, and it's not just me being a counter fan overvaluing, maybe overvaluing local picks a lot more. But I definitely was thinking if Matthew Chuck had to you know, be a part of the deal, I would back away and hang up the phone. That's me being a general manager. But, uh, but then later in that evening, it was said that Andy Strickland definitely questioned that Matthew Chuck is not rumored to be in that trade. This is me being a hockey fan and an orange him chair general manager that when it comes to forwards, that if we were making a play for Jack Eichel, my four forwards that are untouchable is Matthew Kachuk. I'm sure as heck not going to want to lose Matthew Kachuk. Johnny Goodrow, I mean, now that he has a no movement clause, kicks in for uh, five teams that's limited. Don't know if, uh, you know, those are only the five teams you want to go to. As well as Andrew Mondiapani and Elias Sinem. I would not part with those four forwards under any circumstances right now, even when it comes to the fence. I would not part with uh, Rasmus Anderson or even Noah Hannafin. And there was some speculation that one of the reasons why the Flames were trying to make a play for Jack Eichel is actually Noah Hannafin and Jack Eichel are actually friends off the ice, given that they're both from the same Massachusetts area. And then I was not going to throw in Dustin Wolf for the goaltending prospect. So maybe those are one of the pieces that the Calgary Flames, maybe that other recent first-round pick maybe wasn't the Flame. Maybe Matthew Kachuk and Noah Hannafin was that pick in that trade and first and two prospects. I'm going to say with mixed emotions, maybe it was a good thing we did not get Jack Eichel because I would have been more in the mood to play, could play for him and make a trade for him in the offseason and then be able to be allowed to get his neck surgery and get him on the ice, let's say about now, if we made this trade in the offseason the first week of November, as opposed to, let's say, mid to late February, assuming, let's say, if Jack Eichel gets to play for the Americans at the Olympics, so it won't be till late February that he actually make his debut with the now Vegas Golden Knights. But there was just a lot of other crazy rumors that before the draft, apparently Calgary was interested in Jack Eichel and Sam Reinhardt, Sam Reinhardt actually is the son of Paul Reinhardt. If you go all the way back to the early to mid-1980s, that uh, Paul Reinhardt played for the uh, Calgary Flames. That apparently Matthew Kachuk and Connor Zari was going to be rumored to be in that trade. Apparently this whole time, apparently Matthew Kachuk was not rumored to be traded. And I would say, unless Matthew Kachuk, you know, you know, goes to the Flames brass and says, I want to get out of here tomorrow. He's one of those players that I'm building around. And that's why I say, yes, you got to give to get. And I realize I'm not going to uh, get Jack Eichel for Brett Ritchie, the key is their door off, and a Saturday round pick either. But I felt that we had, if that was the trade that Buffalo accepted to move Jack Eichel, was Peyton Krebs, Alex Tuck and two draft picks, I think the Flames would have had enough to uh, get Jack Eichel without sacrificing, I'd say, my untouchables. But uh, you never know. There could be other things beyond the scenes. Maybe, uh, you know, Jack Eichel might have said otherwise to not necessarily want to come here, though I think he wanted to get out of Buffalo that he was willing to go anywhere. And then there's just all these crazy rumors because other Rumors was that Calgary, when they really tried to get him, and going back to that Jeff Merrick bit with uh, L.A. Freeman, that apparently Calgary was offering Rasmus Anderson and Dylan Dubé and Dustin Wolf in a first for Jack Eichel. I almost would have to say that you know package would be a little better than the package that actually got executed. That's just me saying, but at least Buffalo would get two players that they can serve into their lineup. Right now, on a prospect, and of course, draft picks, I mean, it all depends on 
who it's used on and or what it's used for and how it pans out. I mean, that's always the part of the trade you have to, uh, you know, look at down the road. And then, of course, you know, that crazy rumor, which I almost have to say, I mean, Brad for living, you have to almost say he has been a bridesmaid but never a bride because they can add this to his list of almost trades that this would have been, I mean, a huge trade if we made it, you know, for getting a center. And you could probably say, you have to go back to Joe Neuendijk, that Calgary's last time, that's when Calgary's had a really stud number one center. It tells you how hard centers are get. That the only way, you know, you'd get this kind of center is if you back up the Brinks trap and free agency, draft him or make a big trade. I mean, definitely would have been a huge risk. With huge reward, but depending on how it plays out, maybe it was worth it that we did not make a play for him. But, I mean, if you're a Buffalo fan, what do you think of the trade that actually happened and these other crazy rumors that uh, were out there? I'm going to say it was stung a bit, but depending on how Michael played for the Calgary Flames, if it happened, he might have taken a sting out of it. But now that we didn't make this trade... And, you know, want the good start right now, maybe he would have disrupted things. But now our focus is get Johnny Goudreau and Matthew Kachuk signed to long-term deals now that uh, this is out of the way. And then wait until next offseason for sure, depending on if we get out of the playoffs or in the playoffs, how far we get in the playoffs, if we still got to do some of his core. I think the time that we... Could have realistically shook up the core past in the offseason. And there was an article that even said that the Flames' good starts was uh, negated that maybe we shouldn't make a play for Jack Eichel. I'm glad we still did it. And I still felt some satisfaction that we made a play. We were there till the end. Maybe, you know, Vegas was totally early set on, or Buffalo was totally set on Vegas' prospects. Maybe they were totally zoned in on that. Maybe Eichel really, really wanted to go to Vegas a lot more. I guess, you know, in January and February, I, I guess you could say Vegas is a little nicer than in Calgary. But, uh, and then, you know, chance to win a contender. I'm going to say definitely Vegas is much, much closer to getting a cup with Jack Eichel. Sucks it's being in the same division. But, you know, this could have been the shakeup the Flames needed, but... Price could have been too high. I mean, other trades that Brad Sheldon almost was in was apparently last winter I made a video talking about the Peter Luke Dubois and Patrick Liney trade because apparently Calgary was shopping around for Peter Luke Dubois and how that trade has looked. It still looked like both teams lost that trade, especially last season. Apparently we were in on Taylor Hall, then eventually he went to Jersey. Apparently we were close to getting anti Panarin. And then there was a couple other ones I could think of. Mark Andre Fleury, or, as well as Matt Murray. We were still looking for a goalie. Eventually we settled with Brian Elliott over Brian Bishop. But uh, this definitely would have been the biggest, biggest trade that uh, Brad Slim has made. I just had mixed emotions that I'm glad we tried. Maybe it might be for the best that we did not uh, Sacrifice prospects and a few players right now, but uh, of course, he's got to go to Vegas. That's all I have to say. And for Vegas reasons, of course, he had to go there. Definitely be interested in how to be a capologist in Vegas and a long term injury reserve to try to make it work. This, this, uh, this, be aware of those uh, criticisms that Tampa Bay took last year, especially if Vegas goes on a run and ultimately wins the Stanley Cup. So anyways, like I say, if you want to follow along with this Calgary sports fan's journey, all the Flames, Hitman, Roughnecks, and Stampeders, I mostly do talk Calgary sports, recapping games and stories, and this was a big enough story. Yesterday's crazy rumor and today's trade that actually happened for Jack Eichel that we were in it till the very end, especially to record during the week. But I also do a variety of non-sports content, like personal vlogs, attempt to comedy, and do some experience the same on the road or a sport event, and I've done some vlogging on the go. So, if that all sounds like the interest to watch, do follow along with this Calgary Sports Fans journey. You know, too, just uh, make sure you hit like and subscribe. I also have my other social links down in the description below. And I do have a second channel in Brett Hornby Shorts. 
where I exclusively put my short form content on there with YouTube Shorts. And for example, on there, I post a quick Calgary Flames game recap. I guess too bad I won't be talking about Jack Eichel scoring hat tricks for the Calgary Flames, at least at this point. And Calgary Stampeders post game. So I have my channel as well. So I appreciate you like subscribing to my main channel, which is this one, and my second channel in Red Hornby Shorts. But yeah, I'll have to say, of course, Vegas got Jack Eichel. He's going to Vegas. It would definitely would have been nice if uh, we got him. Not sure what the price would have been, but it sounded like that those rumors that were crazy were crazy. And ultimately, what the trade that happens, I think we could have done that without sacrificing too much. But uh, that remains to be seen. We'll see how the surgery works out for Jack Eichel. He could definitely look to a former flame in Gary Roberts on how to bounce back from getting two neck surgeries and still have a nice long career in the NHL as well as uh, how is he going to fit in with the Vegas Golden Knights. I would definitely say the gamble really really does pay off if they win a Stanley Cup this year or the next few years under his contract with those hefty price tags but uh, you know maybe the old saying is maybe the Calgary Flames won this trade by not actually making the trade. We'll see. So I just want to say thanks for watching. Go Flames Go. I wish I would welcome you to the Sea of Red. Jack Eichel, but, uh, you know, it's a business. We'll see how you do in Vegas. And, of course, with uh, Peyton Krebs and uh, Alex Tuck. Best of luck in Buffalo. You can almost say at the start of the year, so you don't need it. But Buffalo seems to have been doing fine so far. And they're probably thinking that a weight has been lifted off their shoulders. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.